Welcome back to the channel. I'm Lauren Fix, and this is the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonale. Comes in three different trim levels. Today we are driving the Veloce, and I'd like to thank Maranello Alfa Romeo that's in Buffalo, New York, because they had a whole bunch of them in stock, and I wanted to grab it before they're sold. But before we jump into this vehicle itself, it's important to know a little bit about the history of Alfa Romeo. Alfa Romeo was born in 1910 in Milan, Italy. It's designed and crafted with some of the most stylish and sporty cars in automotive history. That tradition lives on today as Alfa Romeo continues to take a unique and innovative approach to automobiles. Alfa Romeo made its mark in racing history, but today we have the Stelvio, we have the Giulia, which is the car, and the Tonali, and more product is coming down the line. This is the first of a global car called the Alfa Romeo Tonali. Tonali is named after one of Italy's highest mountain passes. Though Tonali encapsulates the bends and the lines and the curves in nature that occurs as you're crossing this path. The first thing to know about this vehicle is it is a front engine, rear motor, all-wheel drive, compact SUV that seats five people. This is the same vehicle you're gonna see on a global basis. This vehicle does look like a baby Stelvio, which means it has some pretty cool features. First thing you're gonna note are these headlights. I'll hit the unlock button and you'll see that they're also white, but in this case, this addresses you that it knows you're coming. But as you go to the middle, this is really pretty. One of the first things you'll note is this Scodetto grill. This is a signature aspect of Alfa Romeo's and makes it stand out in the crowd and the Italian colors of their country of red, white, and green is here in this Alfa Romeo logo, which has been recently updated. You'll also note that it's all black on our Veloce trim level. All the vehicles look pretty similar, but there are differences on the inside as well as on the wheels, and we'll take a look at that as well. Our test vehicle is a Veloce. It is black on black, and it has a throwback to the original vehicle, and it certainly brings some of the history back when you look at some of the details, such as the wheels. This is a five-circle wheels. These are 20-inch. They're also available in 19-inch on the Veloce trim. Again, the lower trim levels are going to have different choices, but this is a classic for Alfa Romeo, and that logo is in black and silver. I do love the red gigantic Alfa Romeo calipers. Remember, Alfa Romeo is owned by Ferrari. They're all under the same Stellantis lineup. So there is a lot of partnership going on as far as design. You'll note this vehicle rides on Michelin all season tires and all of the Tonales are all wheel drive. There are three trim levels for the Tonali, the Sprint, the TI, and the Veloce. The TI comes with added luxuries such as heated front seats, a heated steering wheel, wireless smartphone charging pad, interior ambient lighting, and a power operated rear lift gate. There are six exterior colors available for the Tonali and different interior color choices as well. We'll show you that when we get to the inside, so you want to stay with us. But it's also important to note that this year has a four-year, 50,000-mile powertrain and warranty from bumper to bumper. There's also one year or 10,000 miles of complimentary maintenance. The one thing you're going to note when you look at the profile of this vehicle is it looks very much like a Stelvio. And that is a good thing because the Stelvio has been very popular with true car enthusiasts. If you're just looking for transportation, there's a million choices out there. But if you're looking for something with style and detail, this vehicle has it. Here's another little detail that you might overlook. One of the coolest details is the Italian flag colors right here in the side marker lights. Really nice. Just a little bit of detail that people really like. Since this is a plug-in hybrid, that Alfa Romeo snake is right there, and you can see the electricity. That's because this is a plug-in hybrid. Behind the driver's side door, you'll find the charge port for the level two charging. On the passenger side is an easy fill gas door, which means you don't have that cap that makes the noise. Just put in the pump, fill it up. A great combination for both types of propulsion. Some of the nice details on the back include the Alfa Romeo logo with the snake and the cross. Again, this is the colors of Italy and Tonale. Coming around to the back, you'll see this upper wing with integrated third brake light, your wiper blade, and this really cool Alfa Romeo logo and the Tonale. Across the back, you'll see these really nice size exhaust pipes for the gasoline side of this. And of course, these are the sensors for the park assist as well as for the cross traffic alert. And I really like these LED taillights as well. You can see that. First thing I'm going to show you is when you change the drive modes, it will change in this 12.3 inch digital cluster. D, it gets red, it gets aggressive, the sound of the exhaust kicks up. You go to N, 
which is your normal mode. You've got your charge port here. It's a little snake with the charging on it. It also changes that center screen. And then A, when you go to the A mode, which is more of your calmer mode, it goes into that more fuel efficient mode. In addition, changes the gauges to be less aggressive. Now, when you go to the D mode and you press this shock absorber, you'll see that it goes from soft damper active to the firm damper, which is what we want because we want this vehicle to handle. All that is in the gauge package, which is in front of you. And then over here, this is Uconnect. Now Uconnect is one of the my favorite systems that's out there. It's easy to use, super simple, and has won a ton of awards. And it's a customizable home screen with standard wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto wireless phone charging. And of course, the six speaker audio system is standard. Our test vehicle includes a power moonroof, Harman Kardon audio system and two additional USB ports. One of the coolest features about Elf Romeo is that logo continues to appear. Start stop button is here on the steering wheel, which makes this vehicle just a little bit more sporty. And then take a look at the steering wheel, nice and grippy. It has thumb rest because when you're properly driving a vehicle, your thumbs should rest on the thumb rest. But you've got all of your information here. The ability to change the screens in front of you is here and of course your volume and so forth. On this side is your cruise control, lane centering, and a lot of the safety features which come standard in this vehicle. The advanced driver assistance systems include adaptive cruise control, which is right there. When you look at the seats for the Tonali, first thing you're gonna notice is these really cool stitched Alfa Romeo logos. Some of the other vehicles have embossed, but this is stitched. I really like that. Leather seating. You can only get ventilated seats with the leather seats. There's also an Alcantara option. One thing that's important to note is these are power seats with four-way lumbar, and that is a massive plus. I do like this Alfa Romeo logo on the door sill, just to remind yourself every day you're driving something that's really cool. And of course, the aluminum framed pedals. On the passenger side, there is the same as on the driver's side. And that's a massive plus because a lot of vehicles in this category do not have this. And that is power seats and lumbar four-way for the person in the passenger seat so they can be comfortable as well. Heated and ventilated seats come on our test vehicle. Going into the second row, you can see this leather seating surface continues but there is a few additional features you don't see in other cars. The extension of the thigh support, meaning that people in the second row who are tall will be comfortable. There's also attachments for two latch systems, even though this vehicle seats three people across the back. In front of you, you've got a pocket as well as behind the passenger seat. Behind the center console, you've got ventilation as well as charging ports for USB, USB-C, and additional storage down below. In the doors, you have the Harman Kardon audio system as well as that aluminum and real leather, more storage in the doors and an additional speaker. Pull down this armrest and you've got spots for two cup holders and your phone. And this is the pass-through that we'll show you in cargo space at the end. And that's how you put long items in like skis. Also very nice to have. If you're tall, make sure that you sit back here to make sure you've got enough headroom, but they've done a nice job bumping up the rear so that you can get taller people in here. From your home screen, you have a lot of choices and a lot of things you can customize. Your media, which we covered before, so you can pick your audio system and how you want to listen. Your comfort, which is also down below, but it's right here if you want to use it for heated and ventilated seats. Really nice for both sides. Your navigation system, your phone connection, and the vehicle information. Now, in here, you can also get your surround view camera, which is an option that is part of visibility and it is an option. Otherwise, backup camera is standard. Going into the My, My Car mode, you can see you've got Driver Mode Explorer. It can show you a, a bunch of additional information and how you want to set up your individual setup, which I really do like, whether it's dynamic, N or A, which is full electric. Your trip information is here. Your hybrid, e-hybrid information is right here. Easy to use, also gives you places for charging and scheduling. And also one of the things I like to watch if you're driving a hybrid is the power flow because it'll show you how much usage you have. And I think people like to know that. Also under performance, you have the technical gauges right there for torque and turbo, your accessory gauges. You also have your accessory gauges for oil temp, transmission temperature, and your battery 
Some of the standard safety features for this vehicle include the autonomous emergency braking, which you can adjust as you wish, which is nice to have, as well as lane keeping assist. Now the lane keeping assist on this vehicle called Lane Sense, and it helps prevent potential accidents by regularly monitoring the vehicle's position in relation to other vehicles on the road. Really nice to have, and you again can adjust that how you want. Your rear seat alerts, so you don't leave something back there, whether that be a child or something else. Your traffic sign recognition, and traffic sign assist, which you can adjust. Front parking sensors, side distance warning, driver attention, and blind spot monitoring are all important features that you would wanna have in a vehicle, especially if they're standard. Further down, you're gonna see your vents, and again, this beautiful knurled aluminum. The vents can be adjusted right here, really nicely done, very clean. Your four ways, and then your climate control adjustments are here. Further down, you have your wireless charging pad with that Alfa Romeo logo, just to remind you you're driving something cool. And also your driver select mode, and we have the firm suspension, because that's the way I like it. Further back, you've got your Prindle, which is really nice. Normal park, reverse, neutral drive, as well as a manual shift. And of course, the volume control, parking brake, and one of my other favorite features here, which is the e-save if you want to go with electric, your Italian logo, and your parking sensors. Now, one of the things that Alfa Romeo has, besides cup holders and the center console, is the biggest paddle shifters on the market. I love these paddle shifters. They come way down. They are really nicely sized. So if you're driving spirited, you will be thrilled that you have these gigantic paddle shifters available to you and they really are just nicely done. Again, real materials, and they make it a more fun drive. On the passenger side, you've got your gas door and your lighting, three seat memory, and of course your standard window lifts and that Harman Kardon audio system that looks really nice. Under the hood is a plug-in hybrid engine, which features a turbo 1.3 liter four-cylinder engine and an electric motor that's mounted over the rear axle. Combine 285 horsepower with the plug-in hybrid powertrain and 347 pound-feet of torque. That's 33 miles of all-electric driving range, backed by a 15.5 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery pack. It has a six-speed automatic transmission and all tonales have standard all-wheel drive. Zero to 60 time, 5.6 seconds. Charging time at home with a 240 volt connection is two and a half hours. That gives it 77 miles per gallon E combined. So the question is, is the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonale a better luxury SUV than the BMW X1? We're about to find out. Zero to 60 time, 5.6 seconds, here we go. Nice, you can feel that e-hybrid kick in, very responsive, like no lag. Really nice pickup. And you can easily get into that 70 mile an hour range with minimal effort. The nice part is you can drive this in electric mode around town, you get about 33 miles of range. But if you decide you want a spirited drive, like I always like, well, that's a different story. I guess the only time I don't do a spirited drive is when it's raining real heavily or it's snowing as we are here in Buffalo, New York. In the dynamic mode, you're gonna see a stiffer ride. If I decide to move it down to the end mode, your ride will calm down. The screen changes in front of you. Again, the settings can be adjusted, which is really nice. A lot of the other vehicles in this category, you can't adjust the settings unless you go into an individual mode. You don't have that problem. You can also use the paddle shifters. You wanna step it up. That works. I'm gonna take it down. You can do that as well tachometer adjusts accordingly as it should and if you go to the a mode that's your advanced efficiency mode that's unavailable in the mobile drive mode so you want to get that back into the automatic mode when you go into the paddle shifters you lose that ultimate efficiency mode which is the a but you know what this has really good pickup even in the a mode i mean instant responsiveness I like the fact that the steering is still firm. Again, you can adjust that how you want. The roads here in New York are terrible, but it absorbs all of this. And the one thing that makes the Alfa Romeo really fun is it's not just luxury, which it absolutely has. And I would 
definitely consider test driving this before any of the other cars so you have a baseline because this is too much fun. You've got that Italian style. You don't get that in any of the competitors. And in most of the compact crossovers, whether they be plug-in hybrid or gasoline or even EVs, they're cool but they don't have that personality. And that's what the Italian styling brings. You're driving something that just makes you smile. I like that about this car. I really think they've done a great job. I've always liked the other Alfa Romeos, the Stelvio, which I've driven all the different trim levels, as well as the Giulia, which is the car. Uh, my son-in-law actually owned one. He loved it. It was a fun, fun track car. This is a daily driver. And having it in the quiet mode, it's really quiet and it absorbs everything, which I think is really important. Now we're gonna go into some curvies here. We're gonna to switch to that dynamic mode. And instantly the sound of the exhaust improves to my liking, maybe not to yours, but I do like a car that sounds like you're driving it. You're, a lot of these electric cars, you're missing that personality, that sound, that intensity that comes along with a gasoline powered car. Missing one of those senses just makes the car boring. This car is far from boring. In the dynamic mode, we get into the corners a little bit here. Car sticks really nicely on these all season Michelins. Again, this vehicle has the 20 inch tires. I think it really is a nice mixture of a daily driver and a spirited drive. So you can see the different engines. So this is the different power flows. So as I'm driving, you'll see, there it is, I'm on the gas because I'm in dynamic. I put my foot in it. And you can see it's using more gasoline and less hybrid, but the hybrid is an e-assist, so it gives it good responsiveness. Now let's change that drive mode down to normal. And you can see once it changes to the end mode, which is your normal driving, you're gonna see that it's using more of the hybrid technology, even with my foot in it. Still, I'm doing 40 miles an hour and then it kicks in just about that 35 mile an hour marker. That's when the gasoline engine kicks in. Right now, we're just driving on e-hybrid, which I do like. Good to have it when you need it. When you don't want it, you don't have to use it, which is why I think this is gonna be the answer for people who are thinking, do I go plug in? Do I don't go plug in? Get the best of both worlds. And I suggest leasing these vehicles so you can get the newest technology as it becomes available. Let's go into the fuel efficient A mode. And we're gonna see how this does. So now that we're in the power flow mode of A, you can see that it's mostly electric. We're doing like 30, 40 miles. And as soon as I kick over 40, it's gonna go onto the gas mode. So right now I'm trying to stay under 40 to use the electricity that's in the battery that's stored. And that is a great way to be as fuel efficient as possible, which is how you get 77 MPGE. And of course, you're on the brakes and slowing down. It has that regen brakes. So it takes that little bit of energy from the frictional heat of the brakes and transfers it to the battery for the recharge. That makes it easier to keep as much charge as you can. And when you're on the A mode, you can see that it goes from the power to the charge and it shows you just like it would any hybrid, which is nice to have. Information in front of you can be changed right now. Using some of the safety systems, this has a speed limiter ready. It'll stop the vehicle going all the way down to zero with the active cruise control. If you're in stop and go traffic, like apparently we are now, I've got a couple slow drivers, but you can also adjust everything right here. And you can press the button and say, set the, temp set the temperature to 70 degrees. So there is that available as well. When it comes to cargo space, there is 23 cubic feet of storage. Fold down those seats, which are 60-40, and there's also a pass-through for long items, and you're at 50.5 cubic feet of storage. Underneath this cover is not a spare tire, but a tire inflation product. There's also charge ports and places to hang bags. It's important to note there is an optional hands-free liftgate, which is on this particular car. It's also on the remote control. When it comes to the price for the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali, it starts at $42,995 and goes up to $49,000. Our test vehicle is a Veloce, so it has the safety package, the premium interior package, the special paint color, and more, and came in at $57,000, including destination and delivery. There are a lot of competitors in this category, the Volvo XC40, BMW X1, and the X2, as well as the Mercedes-Benz GLB, and we have reviewed all of them on our channel, so you want to check that out. One of the things I really 
really like about the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali is the Italian styling. Both inside and out, there are little details that make you know you're driving something special and not just another SUV that's on the marketplace. And you can see that as we point out little details and little Easter eggs as you see them, we call them Easter eggs, as you work your way around this vehicle. It has really nice EV range, and I'm really a fan of the Uconnect system. It's one of the best in the marketplace. Overall, this vehicle really surprises. If you're thinking about a plug-in hybrid, there may be a credit through your state, through your company, or through the federal government. Again, you have to do your homework, check with the dealer. They've got all the details. Also check on the manufacturer's websites. Some have them, some don't, and the rules are constantly changing. Check with your insurance agent, and you may find that the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonali fits perfectly in your garage. I'd like to thank Marinello Alfa Romeo in Buffalo, New York for letting us borrow the 2024 Alfa Romeo Tonale Veloce. I really like this car from the moment you get in it. It really makes you smile because it is something special. If you're interested in the vehicle, check out their dealership. They've got quite a few vehicles as well as a lot of other very cool Italian cars and other sports cars. If you've got additional questions about this vehicle, put them in the comments below. I'd love to get your opinion. Did you buy a Tonali? Are you thinking about buying one? You gotta take it for a test drive. You'll really smile because this car is something different. If you'd like to support our channel, you can buy me a cup of coffee. The link for that is down below, as well as for the website, the podcast, and our social media. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll look forward to seeing you next time.